before we start tonight, we're going to bring out our first guest this evening. She is an absolute firecracker, the undisputed queen of Irish comedy, who's been taking over the world one glass of Prosecco at a time. <laughs> Don't go too early. Here she is, Joanne McNally! <laughs> Can you feel the, the love buzz. tonight? Oh, huh? How you doing? Good, yeah, how are you doing? I'm really good. Yeah. Really good, thanks for coming on. Congrats on Not the shows. And to you, I had to meet you. You had to knock in. Yes, well, this is what you, you got to do. And we're paying homage to you because five shows with yourself in Vogue at the Three Arena. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to put that in context, I think. Uh, that's more than that's more than the killers. Yeah. More more than girls allowed. Yeah. But yes. I will say, and I'm not dampening our achievements, but I I get I I can't help but think girls allowed just weren't arsed doing more. <laughs> we just kept putting them on because we were like, yeah, let's go. Well, I just don't believe that Cheryl was like dying to sell a three arena and couldn't. But anyway, we'll take it. Look, look you, you say that. I think we know the truth, which is you're bigger than Cheryl Cole. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's... Of I'll take it. Um, <laughs> I, um, and you know you've made it, I think, whenever whenever Christy Moore mentions you on stage, I think. I that was a real moment. So Chris, <laughs> someone was like, how do you know you've made it? And I was like, well, Christy Moore, who is notoriously strict at his gigs, he doesn't like chat, and I'm notoriously Organised crack. Organised crack. So apparently he was doing a gig in Vicker Street and someone tried to talk, and Christy went, excuse me, we don't chat here. It's not a drama McNally show. And I thought... Really and you thought, <laughs> yeah. And you thought, slightly insulting, but respect. Oh, I was like, yeah. that's really sweet. I, I, I was coming up the road uh, last Friday night. I passed the Three Arena. Oh, yeah. And, and your crowd was tipping out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Intense. Jesus, it was like Abitha meets Garth Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It, there's a lot, it's a lot of female energy in the room. We're very lucky. We're that, very blessed. Yeah, it's amazing. It is. Someone described it as the last hen party on earth. And I was like, that is, there is something apocalyptically wild about it, which is why we love it. I, I love that there was just, there was quite a, a, a lot there. of girl love there. And then someone from Premier League darts at the back. <laughs> just went, Whoa! <laughs> Do you want to throw first? Game <laughs> on. <laughs> we love it. But it's gas, because we're, I don't know if you were there. But uh, the, yeah, so, the, 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 because they DM you backstage when, they're, when we're backstage and they'll just DM you, kind of telling you their drinking plans and stuff. Because it's a pod, so it's kind of intimate, you know? And uh, there was a girl messaging me, she was like, you don't mind, I'm in the toilet downstairs, I need a tampon. Would you mind dropping one down? And I was like, well, I can't do that now. I'm hardly going to go down and give you my moon cup. We're not that close. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's, you, we, are, we, we feel like we are close. You, you don't do moon cups, but, but you do a lovely line. <laughs> How do you know I don't do a moon cup? Oh, yeah, my no, merch. No, no. Oh, I'm, no, just, no. I'm just saying, but you do a, a, a lovely line of merch. <laughs> I feel like it's just me and you. Yeah. <laughs> I do. You do? So, I was going to go into merch when I was doing my Prosecco Express tour show, but then I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to just do, like, cups or key rings. I wanted to do something a little more substantial. Yes. So I brought out this line I know. <laughs> it was like a hobby gone mad. I, like, I didn't do arts and crafts in lockdown. I feel like I'm making up for it. I brought out this line called Anxious Preoccupied, which is a love attachment style. And now it's kind of lost the run of itself. But we brought, we brought out these huge vegan leather lilac bags. Yes. Which are too big. So I don't... How, how big is too big? It's, well, I sent them to A.B. Hume and she got into it. They're like... Yeah, I mean... They're like a ship. Just, we're gonna, I don't... I'm not good with measurements. There you go. I You're know. not great with size. And I'm this, like Boy This now. is the handbag. <laughs> I, this is, this is like the handbag that, that you have, uh, <laughs> there you go. I mean, this is... Look at that! I mean, what? I'm telling you! 
You where, could, where are we going? You could fit Kat in that, you'd never have to pay for her airfare again. It's true, just stick her up it, in so the overhead. It was supposed to be half that size. It was supposed to be like that, but I'm not good with, like, I don't deal in, I just look at something and go, that looks grand. Like, I bought a desk recently and I measured it and then we had to take the door off the house to get it in. So anyway, they ended up three times the size they were supposed to be. But like, I think they're great. They're, and they're, they're vegan leather and people are like, do they not smell like a fish? They don't smell like a fish. Is, it, is that what they meant to smell smells, like? Yeah, so my outfit for Ghosted is made from vegan leather and it smells like I'm wearing a tuna coat. It's disgusting. But that doesn't. But anyway, but yeah, I know, my mum took one and she took it to the cobblers to make it wearable and basically just cut the sides off it. Just cut it right down. She was like, I've made it wearable, so it's now half the size. So it's half the size, the tours are twice the size, the yeah. success is 10 times the size, and you finally got your own place. I got my own place. I'm relieved. I know. Because this idea of you sleeping in Vogue's basement, I, I felt that was the Irish equivalent of kind of Taylor Swift sweep, you know, sleeping in Beyonce's utility room. <laughs> She'd be delighted. Taylor Swift, I'd be thrilled with that. But, but you, you find a lovely flat. Well, you see, I, I was late getting into comedy, so I had to reset. So I walked away from a proper job, like a paid adult job, and went into a clowning profession, basically. So I had to start again at 33, 34. So I hadn't a pot to urinate in. Yes. And that's why I ended up in her basement. But now I've matured and I have my own... Flat. Now, there is nothing in it. I've had it for three months. I've never spent a night there. <laughs> I've, I've, I've broadband because when I do get in there, I don't have any of my own thoughts. Immediately, I want to just be able to tune into something else. Broadband and a mattress, 40 years of age. Not a teacup, not a spoon. Th this is good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and your lovely boyfriend helped you, helped you move in. Well, he didn't really. No? Well, he tried to help me, but he's, he's as bad as I am. It's... We fell asleep. This... It wasn't great. No. Oh, wasn't. So, there's a, no, yeah, basically he came over and he fell asleep in the middle of about 68 boxes. He was no use to me at all. Uh, so you've obviously... A lot, he seems like a nice boy. He, he seems... is a nice guy. Yeah? Yeah, of course and, he is. And Christmas is coming up. I mean, is there... <laughs> no! Is there an, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. I actually don't think I believe in marriage. I think I've kind of I've grown it now. This is... OK. Does, yeah. does he I think know this for, yet? I think 40, it's like you've either done it now or what's the point, do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's how I feel about it. Is this, is this how you're breaking the news to him? <laughs> no, he knows. <laughs> OK, he knows. He knows, he knows. Uh, so you're going to be spending Christmas with him, you're going to be spending Christmas with your mum? My mother, who obviously she's... Well, not obviously, but she's 70-odd now, so I'm very paranoid about how many Christmases she has left, which sounds really grim, <laughs> but this is what I think about now. I'm like, what, what, what have we got left here? Because I'm obsessed with her. She's one of my best friends. So now she's like, anything she wants, I'll bring her to Santa's Grotto and everything. So now <laughs> every Christmas is about my mother and how we can make her happy. I said, do you want to go to Iceland? What do you want to do? We're making memories, making memories. Do you want a Fabergé egg? What do you want? I'll get it back in the wheel anyway. I... <laughs> Jokes. I mean, she's probably watching now. She's hating this. Uh... I, I love the fact you sometimes get slightly confused about some of your projects as well. There was a there was a documentary. Yeah, so I'm trying. So next year I won't be on tour as much. So I'm pitching documentaries. You know, the hustle continues. But a couple of years ago, like I, like obviously I love my mother, but you know sometimes she just doesn't you know get it. I pitched a documentary on slut shaming because it's an interesting topic, and it was around the time all that Me Too stuff was kicking off. And I said to my mother, I've pitched a documentary on slut shaming. They didn't make it, obviously. But she was like, please, Joanne. She was like really nervous. And she was like, for the love of God, don't pitch that. Things are so tense at the moment. And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, with all the talk about sex and men and be very careful who you're calling a slut. And it took me a second to realise that my mother thought I had pitched a show where I am travelling around the island of Ireland <laughs> calling Irish women sluts to their face. <laughs> Like with the camera crew just hiding in a bush <laughs> on a Sunday morning. I'm like, we're just here waiting for a notorious slut. We've had a tip off. And then just the full camera crew and Claire Byrne live pointed in her face. Anyway, she didn't really understand, but they didn't make it anyway. It's a complete waste of time. But that's what I'll go into. I'll go into documentaries, the, anything like that. The, anything, the, anything. Well, this is all after uh, Prosecco Express comes back. For how, how, many, how many shows have you done? This is... I honestly don't know. But these are the last six? These are the last six, and I'm going to America, more to the States. OK. See if what damage I can do over there. I mean, 